it is guys, it's your boy Sage D, and today we're here to watch a video called Five Urban Legends that are actually fucking true. I swear to God, if they tell me it's, it's some ghost shit or like Freddy Krueger or some fuck shit like that is real, I'm gonna be so fucking mad at top fives who are the original creators of this video. If you guys wanna watch the video, the link is in the description down below. Randy is behind me playing Call of Duty, so don't, you know, don't ask no questions. Lego. An urban legend is a story that is passed down over the years that is usually based on myths and no real evidence. But some urban legends are loosely based on real life events. Sail and all. sometimes years after the legend has started, an event Sail on all body parts. I'm like, what? How the fuck do you sell your own body parts? You can't hold the money if you just sold away your hands. Am I, what? ...and will take place that mimics it, turning it from an urban legend into a real life event. Now these are mainly creepy true urban legends, but I do want to do a few different videos to do with mythical, paranormal and alien urban legends. So keep an eye out for those videos. But anyway, let's get started with this one. Kidney theft. You may have heard the urban legend of the businessman on a trip who meets a woman in a bar and after spending the evening together drinking, she invites him back to her hotel room. Then the next thing the man remembers is waking up the next day. He is suffering with severe back pain and is taken to the emergency room where doctors discovered he has undergone a major operation just a few hours earlier. And unbeknown to the man, it's confirmed that one of his kidneys has been cleanly and professionally removed. It does sound like nothing more than a legend, but this has happened many times. What the fuck? Okay, and I watched a video like a week ago that disproved this theory, or they said it just wasn't true. And now I'm being told that it is. Okay, uh, obviously I can't smash weird strangers that you meet in bars anymore. Not that I would anyway, because my girlfriend is on the couch. Yep. The bed. So, yeah. One of the most documented cases being Nassim Mohammed, a 25-year-old laborer from Ahmedabad in India. Nassim was waiting with some other men at a labor market when he was approached by a man who offered him a three-month painting contract. Desperate for work, Nassim accepted and was put up in a house where he was kept for two weeks. His recruiters told him they were waiting for a tender to pass before the work could begin. But Nassim was well fed and looked after while staying at the house and had no reason to suspect anything until one day he was persuaded into giving a blood sample and shortly after an injection. The next thing he knows, he's waking up in a hospital bed. Nassim said he felt an acute pain on the left side of his body and as he felt beneath the medical gown he had been dressed in, he could feel a bandage and surgical tape. To his horror, he realized he had been operated on and an armed guard who stood by the doorway confirmed that one of Nassim's kidneys had been illegally removed. Nassim was thought to be one of the last of over 500 vulnerable Indian men who were preyed upon by kidney thieves in that particular area. The victims were lured with promise of work only to find out that they were part of an illegal transplant operation run by a team of doctors, the main man being Dr. Amit Kumar who were being paid to supply human kidneys to the rich wealthy Indians and foreigners. Nassim tells of the countless other Indian men who had their kidneys stolen without their knowledge until they woke up to the realization that they were missing an organ, meaning this urban legend is in fact true. God damn. Well, I guess we know where we're not vacationing. Another spot gets on my list of never fucking going there ever. The killer in the back seat. The legend is that a woman is driving home alone late at night when she notices bright lights in her rear view mirror. As the vehicle gets closer, it continually flashes its lights whilst tailgating her, even ramming the back of her car. When the woman arrives home, she realizes that the driver was trying to warn her that he could see a man in the back of her car who was about to attack her who is an escaped murderer. In other versions of the tale, the woman stops for fuel and the attendant asks her to get out of her car and come to the office as there is a problem with her payment. Once in the office, the attendant asks if she's aware that there is a man sat in the back of her car with a machete. This old legend has been used in many horror films, such as the original Halloween film, but it's thought that this urban legend is based on a story that took place in New York in 1964, when an unsuspecting police officer found an escaped murderer hiding in the back of his patrol car. After recognizing the dangerous killer, he shot him dead, and it's thought that the criminal was planning to kill the officer once he'd returned to the car. 
Despite the obvious differences in this story and the legend, it's widely believed that the killer in the back seat did originate from this incident. But another terrible real event took place in Chicago in 2013, when a man snuck into the back of a woman's minivan while she was inside a gas station paying. When she returned to the car and drove off, the attacker showed himself and assaulted her, and then told her to drive to a cash machine to withdraw cash. But there is a serious message that can be taken from this urban legend and the stories. Always lock your car doors, especially when you leave the car only briefly, because you never know who could climb in the back. Nah, nigga, fuck that shit. Okay, you know what this shit teaches you? Always packs the heat. Okay? <laughs> Always shoot a motherfucker dead fast as shit. If they come at you with some of that scream, I'ma kill you bullshit. Fuck all that bullshit, man. Damn that. Speaking of that shit, man, I need to get a gun permit out this bitch. I'm out here ass naked in these streets, you know, trusting people with my life and shit by not uh, pulling a gun on them for, like, even smallest of uh, disagreements. The body under the bed. Now, this next legend is a pretty disgusting one, but it has been around for many years. It tells the story of a honeymoon couple who check into their Las Vegas hotel and are delighted with their room. But as they settle in, they are aware of a bad odour. So bad that they ring down to reception to see if there is another room available. Unfortunately, the hotel is fully booked, but they offer to send a maid up to thoroughly clean the place to try and get rid of the smell. But when the couple returned from their night out, they can still smell the odour. At this point, the pair were annoyed and started to tear the entire room apart in a bid to find the smell. And as they pulled the mattress off the box spring, they were horrified to find the corpse of a woman. That is the urban legend, and unfortunately this has happened long after the legend's origin. In 2010, police were searching for 28-year-old mother of five, Sony Milbrook, when they made a shocking discovery. Her body was found in a metal box frame beneath the mattress in room 222 of the Budget Inn Motel in Memphis. Of course it's a fucking Budget Inn. I used to like live in a Budget Inn with my family back in the day, man. And yes, the Budget Inn is just full of fuck shit. Millbrook had been missing for two months and forensics confirmed her body had been under the bed all that time. It was also reported that the room was rented out around five times in the two months since the body was hiding. So pe Five months? Two months. But that's still long. Fuck. People had slept on the bed. It was confirmed that she'd been murdered and had stayed at the motel prior to her death, but when payment wasn't made, her belongings were removed from the room and it was cleaned and rented out again. Millbrook's family repeatedly asked the motel staff if they could search the room when she first disappeared, but staff refused. Shortly after her discovery, Millbrook's boyfriend was arrested and convicted of her murder and sentenced to life in prison. It's crazy that if staff would have searched the motel room, her body would have been found and no one would have slept just inches above her in that bed. And the body under the bed would have remained just an urban legend. Damn! Killer is inside the house. Oh, come on, bro. This shouldn't even be an urban legend, man. We all know this shit happens. This is one of the most popular legends out there. A teenage babysitter has put all the children to bed and is downstairs watching TV. The phone rings and the girl answers it. On the other end is a man laughing who... Why is it that always the chick that's in this situation always has the spring break titties? Every time! It's like she is at Mardi Gras while she's watching these children. <laughs> tells her to check on the children. When she asks who is calling, he hangs up. Thinking the call is a hoax, the girl ignores it and carries on watching TV. The phone rings again with the same man, and now the girl is getting worried and decides to call the police. They tell her to wait at the house and they will trace the next call she gets. When the man rings again, the police call the girl and tell her the caller is inside the house and she should get out as soon as she can. Dude, I'm sorry. I know the babysitter's probably paying me like nine, or if I'm lucky, even maybe like 9.25 an hour, but I'm leaving your kids. Fuck the kids, man. This is not my seed. Okay, I'm going out the second story window out this bitch, man. And and look, you can make more, okay? I mean, like, just, you know, Netflix and chill a couple of times. You'll be fine, baby. Okay? What I look like dying for some kids that I didn't even have to get smashed to make. I am sorry, kind of. I will write a very nicely worded apology letter to the parents over her dead children. You know, but that's the best I can do. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going out. 
I'm not dying for this shit, man. I'm just not. I'm not even sorry. I don't even feel bad. The girl bad. is greeted outside by the police and they tell her the caller is upstairs with the children. It's a creepy legend and has been used for many movies, but tragically there is a true story behind it and it involves 13-year-old Janet Christman. On the evening of March the 18th, 1950, Janet was babysitting a three-year-old boy at his home in Columbia, Missouri. It was a stormy night and Janet had turned down a party invitation to earn a few extra dollars babysitting. See, that's what she was fucking up in the first place, man. Turn it out a party invitation. Mm. At around 10.30 p.m., police officers received a call from a young girl who was screaming hysterically, asking for someone to help her. But before the policeman could identify the caller, the line went dead. The phone call could not be traced as no one was manning the telephone test board. When the child's parents returned from their night out at around 1.30 a.m., they found the house ransacked and made the most horrific discovery. Janet's body was lying in a pool of blood with evidence of her frantically running through the house. It's thought the intruder smashed a window and attacked Janet in the living room, hitting her over the head, possibly strangling her with the cord of an iron and attacking her with a mechanical pencil. The initial suspect for the murder was a local man who was known to carry a mechanical pencil and had shown an interest in Janet, but inexplicably there was little cooperation from the police and the sheriff's department involved in the case. So despite evidence linking the man to the crime, he was never convicted and Janet's murder remains unsolved, sadly giving some truth to the babysitter urban legend. That's sad, man. Olivia's The Cursed Game. Now this is a strange one. It could be true, but it could also just be purely an urban legend. So instead of comparing the legend with the truth, I'll just look into the story behind the so-called cursed game and you can let me know what you think. In 1981, an arcade cabinet game called Polybius briefly appeared in a Portland, Oregon amusement park. The style of the game itself cannot be confirmed as some describe it as a weird abstract action format with a series of puzzles and others describe it as an action space fighter. But according to the legend, it was so popular that it was causing addiction and lines of people would form around the game, often resulting in fights over who would play next. But Polybius was no ordinary game. It was said to induce various psychological effects on players, with reports of people suffering from a series of unpleasant side effects, ranging from amnesia, nightmares, stress, and even a fear of playing any type of game, with some players apparently turning into anti-gaming activists. Then, around a month after the game's release, it disappeared and Polybius has vanished without a trace. The rumours over the years are that it was a prototype for the arcade game Tempest, but this has always been denied, and the most believed thought is that it was a tool of the United States government to test the player's mental and physical ability as a method of recruiting soldiers. According to the legend, there were also reports that the machines were visited by men in black suits who would collect unknown data from them, allegedly to test responses to the game's psychoactive effects. The urban legend and stories about Polybius have appeared as a feature story in the 2003 September edition of GamePro magazine, under the heading Secrets and Lies. It has also appeared in an episode of The Simpsons with the words property of the US government printed on the front of the machine, and it still continues to be the subject of numerous investigation type programs. In 2011, a Polybius machine was rumoured to have been located in a Newport, Oregon storage unit. It was recognised by the name on the side and it looked like an old Pac-Man game. The owner was apparently intending to sell it on eBay, but no more information has been released. So if anyone can shed some light on this mysterious cursed game, or if anyone has even played it, then let everyone know. The people That's hella crazy, man. Ah, uh, mm. Well, yet again more things that I will be making sure never to freaking do. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, it's by Top Fives. So make sure to go check out the channel. The link to their channel is in the description down below. I mean, the links to this video, you know what I meant. As always, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. This is your boy Blasphemous HD. Twist. Again, this is your boy Blasphemous HD. If you guys enjoy my reaction videos, make sure to click the annotation on the screen or click the link down in the description. Go over and subscribe to my brand new reaction channel. I know you guys will enjoy all the videos I'm going to be pumping out over there. I've got a bunch of them. Have a great day and I'm out.